Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Jeremy Kilgrove. Right now I'm going over, um, I'm making a tutorial series on how to make Perlin and Value Noise. And so I figured it'd be really helpful if we went over the differences of the two. Uh, this will be a really short video, but that's okay. Hopefully I explain this okay and you guys understand the differences. So uh, let's take for a second your screen and let's divide it up into a bunch of grids. How Value Noise works is the red dots get assigned a number value. And as your pixel moves towards that dot, it becomes more and more like that dot's value. And the way that it becomes like that value is how you interpolate it. But either way, when you're at that red dot's position, it will be that red dot's value. Whereas Perlin noise uses gradients. So it actually pushes the light away from the pixel towards a certain direction. And all of the gradients um, interact with one another to create kind of this flow through the screen. Right. So what I did is I actually rendered out some value noise for you. And I put in the values of the corners of what it was being interpolated towards. And you can see in certain areas definitely how it goes towards how the gradient, you know, grades into that corner. And um, you can kind of see that. So uh, versus um, Perlinoise here, you can see, that especially in the center there, the, the gradients push the light towards the center, making that spot completely white. And uh, in other areas, it pushes the light. And, um, and in its trail leaves darkness. darkness. Um, yeah, I'll just give you a second to look at that. I'll go back to the other one for you. You can look at that one, how that works. And we'll go back to this one. Okay, so you can really notice this effect um, a lot more if you increase the frequency of both of them. So in um, value noise here, we've increased the frequency. And you can see it definitely looks like a lot of, of cubes and squares and sharp corners, which are not found in nature. Those are not things that are natural. Those don't really happen often in nature. So it's not very um, uh, it's not very good for making procedural like textures or terrain or things like that because you're going to get these unnatural artifacts. Uh, whereas Perlin noise, if I increase the frequency, you can see it looks a lot more natural. There's uh, larger areas moving through. Um, there's various... I don't know, angles and corners. And this is only, in my examples, using four gradients. This is only using diagonal gradients. So um, only using four vectors. So if I were to use like eight or maybe even an infinite number, it might get different results, possibly better. So who knows? But either way, I'll go back here. You can see uh, the value noise. And we'll go back to the Perlin noise. So uh, Ken Perlin got this achievement uh, for technical, technical, they got, got the technical achievement award for creating this algorithm and uh, for good use. It is amazing and it has allowed uh, software people to do amazing things with textures and with with uh, procedural generation. So hope you guys learned something and um, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe and let me know what you thought down below. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.